Phil, thanks for doing this. Thanks for giving me some of your time today. Okay. So, um, you're our Adair guy. So I'm going to ask you questions about Camp Adair. Um, what year did you go there, and uh, how I, early on in the construction of Adair did you arrive? Well, I arrived, I can tell you the exact date. It was November 22nd, 1942. Right. And the reason I know the exact date, because November 21st, was my 21st birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> Did you get to drink a beer on that day? I didn't get to drink. Oh. I almost drowned. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, and that's, that's how we, you know, I, I was inducted in, in New York. We, uh, you know, we, we were outfitted in Yapank, uh, Long Island, and then we got on a, a troop train. I don't know how long we were in Long Island, not more than three or four days. And uh, we got on a troop train, and the troop train headed north, and uh, and then tra traversed the uh, the nation. Uh, you know, I don't know. Sometimes we must have gone into Canada. I think we, we just followed a very northerly route uh, west, and uh, and as the train pro progressed, it got larger and larger. I can't. I think when they left uh, Long Island, there may have been five or six cars, and by the time we got to Camp Adair, there must have been 20 or 30 cars. It was, it was, it, uh, we got, there was a lot of men got off that train. <laughs> and, and you arrived in the, in the late fall? It was November 22nd. Right. I mean, it's exactly the date. It was right. November 22nd when we got there, and then <coughs> uh, eventually I was assigned to Company B, in the 414th, and when, when I, the, the truck dumped us off there, there was nobody there except cadre. We were absolutely the first troops to be uh, to be assigned to uh, to Company B. Wow. So, so what, what were your quarters like when you first arrived? Oh, they had the wooden barracks. The wooden barracks were there. Okay. The wooden barracks were there, and they. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, no, but I think. I, th I think the whole the whole company arrived in one day. They, they all came off that one train. No, there are others came subsequently, but you know, but the bu the bulk of the company uh, came off of that one train. As I say, there must have been thousands of men on that train. How much of an adjustment was it for you to go from the civilian life you've been living before the war, before the war began to the you know kind of the rigorous training at Camp Adair? Well, you know, I was 21 years old. You know, you're pretty. Uh, uh, pretty flexible, and uh, I know I didn't find it a, a very difficult adjustment at all. You know, it's, and uh, and as a matter of fact, you know the the uh, the draft being what it was, uh, I had some, I had some college training at the point, and so uh, the next thing you know, I I uh, I was private first class within about three weeks, and I. It was corporal and within a month, and uh, and I made buck sergeant, uh, in, uh, you know, in, in a couple of months after that, and, and staff sergeant. I, th I think within six or seven months of the time I was inducted, I, uh, you know, I was staff sergeant. There's a legend out there that you soldiers call it Swampadare. Swampadare, yeah. Is there well, a reason for that? What? Like why? You know, it, 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 when I got there, it was raining. And it had been raining for two or three days, and then indeed when we when we got to the Company B area, we were getting off that truck, the, the, the book sergeant who was there getting us off the truck said, "Don't lose your raincoat, or you'll drown." And so help me, it did not stop raining until March. And you know, and, you know the, the intensity of the rain would stop. So sometimes it was heavy, sometimes it was. Uh, uh, just a slight drizzle, but it never stopped raining. And uh, th that took a lot of adjustment. Th that took a lot of adjustment. There's, and I do recall that once we were off on some kind of an exercise and we were marching back at the end of the day and I was so wet and so miserable. I, <laughs> I, 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 I recall saying to myself, if I can live through this, I can live through anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, needless to say, you don't go back to the Corvallis area for vacations. No, no. It's a little sunny. No. I, 
I haven't. I went back there once, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we were we had a reunion once in uh, Portland, and I went. I went. I, and when I did, did take the tour down to, of course, we couldn't get in. It was uh, it was blocked off. It's a, it's a wildlife sanctuary now, but uh, but we stood at the gate and looked in. Uh, but I don't miss it. <laughs> Did you get to do stuff uh, when you weren't on duty and kind of in the Corvallis area? Did you get out and all? I didn't. Know, well, I got out in the Corvallis area, you know, I did, uh, on the passes and whatnot. But I didn't. Uh, you know, just the usual things. You anyway, know, we'd go out and, and have a few drinks, or uh, you know, we'd go to the university. would have uh, uh, dances every once in a while. We would go to the dances and whatnot. And that, was, that was about it. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of the entertainers who came to camp? The only one I recall was Bob Hope, and Did you get to see him? Uh, well, I got to see him on the, uh, at the on the stage, and he had was what was his name Jerry Colonna, and uh, you know that, that other other entertainers came out, but uh, frankly, I don't remember them. I don't remember their names. So. Did you finish your training at Camp Adair, or did you go elsewhere? I fin I I was with the, the 104th from start to finish. I see. You know, the, you know, the only time the only time I was away was after I was wounded. You know, and I I recuperated in uh, in England, and then they sent me right back to the 100th. Of course, the the day I the, the couple of days before I actually got back to the uh, to the uh, to the Company B. The war, the war ended. The war ended as I, as I got off the uh, boat at La Havre. They said we, as we were disembarking. Somebody said the Germans have surrendered. So <laughs> that, was, that, was that was good news. That was good news. That was good news. So you traveled across America. They loaded you on the boat. What was that trip across the Atlantic like? Okay, crowded. <laughs> That's, uh, you know, it was crowded. It was on the on the boat. I, you know, the. the there were a, a lot of, uh, I just recall a lot of Canadian, uh, whatever, so small ships in and woozing in and out, of the uh, uh, you know, and, and the schooling us. But we, but of course, we went directly to the, uh, to Cherbourg. We didn't go. We didn't just embark in England. No, we went right to Cherbourg, and, uh, and so, uh, <coughs> and of course, the share the harbor of Cherbourg was totally destroyed. And so they had to take us off in lighters. Uh, but they took us off and landed us on shore, and, uh, and they drove us into a, a bivouac area somewhere. We, we, we were there for about, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 days, maybe. And then uh, we were told we were part of the Canadian First Army, and uh, we went off to, uh, uh, they transported us off to Brussels, and. Uh, then <coughs> eventually we uh, uh, <coughs> we went up to Whistle or where it was that little town we relieved the, uh, the British regiment and uh, uh, went it, went it to uh, went across the uh, the border into Holland. You guys, you guys were you were kind of on the on the fringe of the Battle of the Bulge, weren't you? Weren't you? Oh yes, we were on the fringe of the Battle of the Bulge. You know, as as a matter of fact, that yeah. <coughs> The uh, uh, the uh, one of one of the toughest battles we ever fought was at a little town called Pier, and uh, when that was over, uh, I, I got I got back to company headquarters, and the captain said something to me, and I couldn't hear him, and so I complained. I said, Captain, I don't hear anything. So they sent me back to the uh, battalion uh, uh, medics, and they determined that I had two earfuls of w earwax and a, <laughs> and, a, and a slight ear infection. And so they cleaned out my ears, and they gave me a shot and, <coughs> and told me to lay down. <coughs> and and not the day after that, or two days later, uh, the bulge broke out. And, uh, and so uh, <coughs> the walking wounded, so to speak, was sent back to their units. And uh, when I got, got back to my unit, the first thing they told me is that I had to take my, my squad out and relieve the uh, now post in, uh, in Rollsdorf. And, it was, and we got into a, uh, a firefight with a German patrol, and that's when I was wounded. Mm -hmm. 
So the men I've been interviewing today have a, each of them have a story. Their story. You got a story? No, I don't think so. I, you know, uh, yeah. it's just, I, I, it, you know, I, I, I tend to concentrate on what's going on about me at the moment, and that, and I, uh, I did that. You know, I, I never, never figured out what the big picture was. You know, I just was interested in who was on the right of me and who was on the left of me, and certainly in who was in front of me. And uh, I try to concentrate on that. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, we didn't have any. Uh, we, we had a loss. You know, we were in combat. We saw we saw plenty of action. I remember, I remember the. Uh, I, I do remember. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we first went into combat, we had a couple of days afterwards. Uh, you don't realize how tired you can get. Um, but at uh, one time, we were trying to cross a field, and they uh, the Germans opened up with a machine gun fire, and of course, like everybody else, I fell to the ground. And the next thing I know, uh, the, uh, the company captain is looking down at me. He thought I'd been killed, but I'd fallen asleep. As a matter, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I've been accused of that. I've been accused of the, the minute my head hits the pillow, I fall asleep, but I don't stay asleep, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're doing a great job of staying away for this. <laughs> So, okay. so how about these? Um, how long have you been coming to the reunion? Oh, oh, well, that's, that's hard to say. Uh, Nineteen. Uh, oh gee, I think must have been. Uh, I started coming to the reunion. Uh, I think it must have been about nineteen, sometime in the nineteen seventies. I retired uh, in nineteen sixty-two. And uh, I moved to uh, Pompano Beach, Florida, and I, uh, you know, I was reading, th one day I was reading through uh, a uh, magazine I get from the DAV, and I noticed that the, uh, the uh, 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 104th was having a reunion in Cleveland. And so I, uh, I, I contacted the, uh, the, uh, the, the name I uh, listed in the uh, DAV magazine, and the next thing I know, uh, I got a call from uh, <coughs> from Bob, and he was, you know, and you know, invited me. And I, uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't go to the reunion. That, that, that was the that was when they had the reunion in uh, Florida. As a matter of fact, but I was, <coughs> I was I was practicing law there at the time, and I didn't couldn't couldn't quite make uh, make it. Uh, but I did the next one, which was Cleveland, and I've been going ever since then. So I, you know, it's it's uh, I can't, can't tell you how many years it was. Must have been since 19, 1975, 1976. I've, been, I've made a lot of them. So I made them all since then. Do they mean a lot to you? They do. They do. You know, the, the one thing uh, the one thing you realize, you know, even I've been separated from uh, uh, from all of them for many many years. Yeah, the one thing you realize when you get uh, when you come in contact with them, uh, these these are really your buddies. These are your these are your friends. They, you know you know nobody nobody took care of me the way these people did. I'm asking the veterans today if there's a particular lesson that young people can gain from the experiences you and your generation had during the 40s. Uh, no, I don't. No, I. I you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, you, every war is different, and every war is fought differently. And I, 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 I don't know that you can, you can, uh, t you know, do anything that would tell to get somebody prepared to fight. Uh, I, I had, I, I could never have imagined the way they 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 fought in the, in, uh, in Korea. And, and the way they the way they're fighting now, I, you know, you know this is uh, nothing I could have prepared anybody for. Sure. And did you train at Camp Carson? Uh, you know, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah. Well, I was, you know, as I said, I, I was there from the uh, from the beginning to the end. You know, the, the only the only action I missed was the action after after <coughs> after we um, uh, after Rolsdorf. You know, the next thing I, the next thing you know is they. They crossed the river and went into uh, Cologne and 
and then eventually uh, hooked up with the Russians over on the Elba. Uh, so when I got back to the unit, they were they were in they were in, in Hala, and we were on this side of the river, and the Russians were on the other side of the river. Uh, but every every action that the, that the 414th was in from from the beginning until uh, until Durham, uh, I was there. We, we had a tour of Camp uh, Fort Carson the other day. Mm -hmm. What did you think of that place? How much had it changed over the decades? It, I, I, mean, I couldn't I couldn't have recognized a, a single a single spot in there. The only thing I recognized the mountains in the in the in the in the, in the, uh, in the distance. That's all. Yeah. You can't. <coughs> totally, it's a totally different uh, area. I, mean, I couldn't, I couldn't orient myself in that place at all. Is there anything else you want to share today? No, <laughs> not, not really. I That's great. Thanks for your time, fellow. Thanks for your service as well. Well, you're quite welcome. <laughs>